fought in a new theater last week, far from both Russian and Ukrainian territory. The latest Russia-Ukraine clash took place in Africa, in the West African nation of Mali. Now, this was not direct warfare. It was an indirect battle between Ukrainian intelligence and Russian mercenaries. Mercenaries from the infamous Wagner Group. Some of you may remember Wagner. It was involved in some of the heaviest fighting in Ukraine until the group revolted in June 2023. Their former leader, Yevgeny Prigozhin, marched towards Moscow. His coup failed. He died two months later in a mysterious plane crash. And Wagner was put under the Russian Defense Forces. But Prigozhin had built up a large presence in Africa by then. So this division, the African Arm, was renamed. It was called the Africa Corps. Basically a rebranded Wagner group in Africa. It's now operational in Mali, where it works with Mali's ruling military junta. Now apparently, they work together to combat terrorists and separatists. But last week, these Russians suffered a setback, thanks to Ukraine, in Mali. Let me explain how. Starting with the battle, it took place near Tinza Waten. It's a small village near Mali's border with Algeria. And it's a militant stronghold. There are multiple insurgent groups in this region. You have the separatist Tuareg people who have been fighting for independence since 2012. Then you have terror groups like the JNIM, which is affiliated to the Al-Qaeda. There are also other outfits allied with the Islamic State and other terrorists. Basically, this entire region is quite dangerous. Now, Mali's junta and the Russian mercenaries have been fighting against all these groups, terrorists and separatists. And last week, they engaged with the Tuareg rebels. There were skirmishes early last week, but the real fighting began on Thursday, and initially it seemed to be going well for Mali and the Russians. They seemed to have been pushing the rebels back until nature intervened. A sandstorm reportedly broke out, forcing the junta and the Russians back. This gave the rebels time to regroup and to get back up. Now here's what Wagner says. The rebels increased their number to 1,000 people. The Malians and the Russians were heavily outnumbered and they were surrounded. And that is when the rebel onslaught began. Now, we don't know the final death toll. There are conflicting reports. Some reports say that 20 Russians were killed. Others say that 82 Russians were killed and 15 were captured. Now, if the second report is true, it would mark one of the worst defeats for the Wagner group, at least outside Ukraine. And ironically, Kiev may be the reason for this defeat, because Ukraine's military intelligence agency says it played a part in this battle. The agency spokesperson made an announcement on Monday. He said that the rebels were given necessary information and more. What is more? Maybe drones. Ukraine-style unmanned drones. They were used to the attack against Wagner. So this information and more apparently helped them rout the Russians. It sounds like an outlandish claim that Ukraine would be working with separatist rebels in Mali. But then this photo has been doing the rounds. It was allegedly taken after the battle and it shows the rebels holding up two flags, their own and Ukraine's. Now, if Ukraine did have a role to play here, it won't be a first because Kiev has done this before. They've worked against Russia in overseas battles in Syria and the Sudan. But this is the first known Ukraine-Russia clash in Mali. And it also poses a unique dilemma. Ukraine claims that it is fighting with the Tuareg separatists. And it's working to eliminate Russian war criminals. At least one Wagner commander was killed. The fate of another is still in doubt. A Russian war blogger tied to the Wagner group is also reportedly dead. So Ukraine will be treating this as a victory, both for them and the Tuareg rebels, who, by the way, did not work alone. I mentioned that this area is home to multiple terror groups. Apparently, all of them supported the Tuaregs to defeat the Malian and the Russian force. And this should pose an ethical dilemma, at least for Ukraine's backers in the West. Because if all of these reports are true, Kiev is working with terrorists. Russia says that Ukraine even has boots on the ground in Mali and it is training the separatists and terrorists there. Moscow might be exaggerating, but will the West at least investigate these claims? Or will it turn a blind eye to all the Ukrainian activity, no matter how destabilizing, as long as it keeps hurting Russia?